Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I've been a family therapist um, who has specialized in early childhood trauma recovery for 31 years. I've been doing that personally and I've assisted hundreds of other people do the same. From that experience, I want to ask you a question about yourself. You're in many relationships. Um, when you are conflicted with another adult or a child, whose needs usually come first? There are three choices. The other person's need, you put the other person's needs ahead of yours, you put your needs ahead of theirs, or you see their needs and your needs as being equally important. Which is true for you generally? The reason I ask this question is <clears throat> relationships exist between people in order to fill needs. We're all needy people. We're all needy critters. A need is a discomfort. We all try to reduce our discomforts moment by moment. And in relationship, that often causes and satisfies needs. Um, many of us, perhaps you, when you were very young, Young, many young children, let me generalize, many young children for a wide bunch of reasons do not get their needs met well enough. Their parents are busy, their parents are distracted, they had children by accident, they were not wise enough before they had children, many reasons. Kids don't get their needs met well enough. When they are deprived of getting their needs met, <clears throat> young children develop psychological wounds, injuries. One of the most prevalent and the most crippling in my experience as a trauma recovery therapist is the wound of excessive, not normal, excessive shame. Shame is the feeling and the thinking that says, I am an inferior person. I'm clumsy, I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I'm dumb, I'm unlovable. No one will like me. That is symptoms of the wound, psychological wound of excessive shame. One of the manifestations of this wound is <clears throat> when a shame-based person um, who is needy and needs other people, as we all do, to fill some personal needs, companionship, approval, um, support. When a shame-based person is faced with a conflict with another person, especially someone they depend on, like a mate, a friend, a sibling, a boss, when a shame-based person is faced with a conflict, whose needs do they put first? The other person's or their own? My experience is we shame-based persons, for I am one, Instinctively, from early childhood, we were taught our needs are less important than other people's. We shouldn't assume to put them even equal to other people's because that is being selfish, and selfish is bad. <clears throat> so we instinctively and usually unconsciously put other people's needs before our own. That leads to frustration, it lowers our self-respect, and it lowers other people's respect. It doesn't work very well. Yet, many people, many wounded people, have very little self-awareness as a way of protecting against the inner pain that they carry. And because of their lack of awareness, they don't even see that they're putting their own needs second. Or even if they do see it, they justify it. Well, I can't. They don't see that there are three choices. They only see two. My choice first, or my needs first, their needs first. They don't see that I can find a way of putting their and my needs equally. They don't see that. And because they've been taught it's selfish and bad to put your own needs ahead of someone else's, <clears throat> they don't. 
They often are called people with low self-esteem, low self-confidence, being over-apologetic, and can be described as being shame-based. Do you know anybody like that? Could that someone be living inside your skin? <clears throat> Do you have any children who are like that? Any parents? Any siblings? If so, what can you do? I want to offer you some real specific suggestions. If you are a psychologically wounded person, a grown wounded child, find out, check to see. If you don't know if you're a GWC, grown wounded child, check. I have some articles on my nonprofit website in Lesson 1 that show you how to do that, and a group of related videos show you how to do that. Find out if you are carrying psychological wounds from childhood trauma. So it's not about blaming your parents, because they were wounded also. If you are wounded, decide if you want to reduce your wounds. If you do, Study Lesson 1 and the related videos. Pay special attention to the wound of excessive shame. The alternative to that is healthy self-respect and self-love. If you decide that you have the wound of excessive shame, try redefining the term selfish. We're taught that Selfish, little s, selfish, means um, thinking only of yourself, being insensitive to others, putting your needs and welfare ahead of other people. And we're taught that that's bad and shameful. I propose there is another meaning of the word selfish, which is far more healthy. It is capital S, selfish, and it means feeling comfortable with putting your needs equal, not better, equal to other people's needs except in emergencies. So there's little s selfish and big s selfish. I encourage you to expand your awareness and your belief, teach your personality subcells who are running your life, teach them it's okay and even good to be big s selfish. That means we're equal. We're not better, we're equal. Another specific thing you can work on if you're a wounded person is improve your awareness. See this video for a simple, powerful way to do that. As you improve your awareness, use it. When you are in conflict with other people, adults or kids, Become aware whose needs do you usually put first. And when I use the word you, the pronoun you, I am referring to the personality subselves that control your thoughts and your actions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see the videos related to lesson one. Here they are. Your life is controlled by personality subselves. If you're controlled by a false self, you will probably be used to putting your needs behind or lower than other people. Another group of grown wounded children put their needs ahead of everybody else's and they are called egotistical and self-centered. That's just as bad, isn't it? So increase your awareness and notice the pattern when you are in conflict. If you put your needs lower than other people. Last, instruct your personality subselves who are governing you. It's time to change. Unlike what we were taught as a young child, it is okay and even healthy to put our needs equal to the people around us. That implies you're using awareness to learn what do you need in a conflict or in general. Many people, in my experience as a therapist, if I say, um, what do you need? 
They go, uh, I don't know. That's right, they don't know because they're not used to being aware and asking that powerful question, either in conflict or not. What do I need right now? Meaning, what do my subselves need? The next specific suggestion I want to offer you, um, if you want to promote yourself to equal without guilt, without guilt, learn how to communicate effectively. See lesson two in my website for seven powerful communication skills I bet your parents, ancestors, and teachers never taught you. If you learn these skills, you will learn how, once you're aware of your needs, you, you can learn how to assert your needs with other people respectfully, listen to their rejection, their response and their resistance, reassert, and do win-win problem solving so you and your partner get their needs met well enough. Learn to communicate effectively. The last suggestion I have for you, if you're a parent or if you care for someone else's children, encourage them to learn what you just learned in this video. Teach them it is healthy and good to put your own needs equal to those of other people, except in some emergencies, and to do so without shame and without guilt. What did you just learn? Can you put it into words? What are you thinking right now? If you're aware, you'll be able to answer that question. Can you summarize the purpose of this video? Do you agree with it or not? Whatever your reaction, I appreciate your watching. I hope you find this useful. Study Lesson 1 and Lesson 2. Enjoy.